now let's go back to our course and to the linear controller part of the course. Uh, maybe uh, this is the uh, most uh, practical uh, and implementable part of our course is the linear controller. And the linear controller for the robot uh, is much easier to uh, design and to implement. And of course, it has some limitation. We will talk about it in this uh, section. Why we can use linear controller? Uh, it comes from the last chapter. The answer comes from the last chapter. We can use the linear controllers if we can use a linear model for the system. And we saw that if we have geared actuator with high uh, ratio, gear ratio, eta, as you rem rem remember, then we have an equivalent uh, I and an equivalent P, the, uh, the moment of inertia and the uh, viscous frictions uh, would be uh, a combination of the moment of inertia of the load and uh, eta squared moment of inertia of the motor or we have a nonlinear part of the system the nonlinear part of the dynamics plus eta squared uh, weighted linear part on the motor side so we can uh, in some cases if eta is greater than uh, very very greater than one more than 100 or so, it is quite possible to have this. And we discussed about that, how to find it, how to identify that in the last chapter, and you will uh, do some uh, uh, examples uh, during the assignment and also the project that you will have after the midterm. So if we have a linear model, it is natural to design a linear controller. And it is not uh, a part of my course to teach you linear controller. All people in the class have taken at least one or two courses on the linear control part design. Do you know that you can design different uh, approaches? So I will review them just to remind you the way that it is working and give you an open an avenue for you to do further uh, work work on this and do uh, and uh, use your uh, theoretical uh, uh, control design uh, in a real practice in a real uh, robotic manipulator so uh, we start with this linear model for the system of course we go uh, beyond that uh, but we start with the linear control we have a linear second order system uh, and also uh, uh, disturbance part to the system. And we know that the linear controller is very good uh, to have a desired trajectory, to track a desired path. We, we talk about the path, which path we are working, the cubic, quantic, or a linear segment with parabolic blend uh, in the last uh, part. Uh, we can, it is also very good, you know, that the linear controller uh, can uh, reject or attenuate the disturbance. Uh, and uh, we have a disturbance here. Uh, we know that the, there is the gravity term uh, coming here, and the gravity term is not constant. We could consider it constant, but it is usually uh, Q-dependent. We consider both cases with the linear controller. And also the most important and uh, significant part is that if you use a feedback controller, uh, you are uh, uh, the sensitivity to the model becomes low. And you can have still not very accurate model. We know that this model is not very accurate. You remember the consistency measure, you know, the averaging we had before. We have some uh, uncertainty in the model, but the controller can uh, basically work with that uncertainty. And it, we might have also some actuator limitation. We have, we know that the DC motor is uh, the amperage or the current that we can get is usually bounded. Uh, again, in linear controller, we should uh, talk about this thing and we have to use that 
in the case. So uh, it is very, very natural and very, very interesting that a robotic manipulator is a very, very good uh, case study for our linear controller design uh, course or theory that we have uh, before. Uh, of course, this uh, I will talk about this very uh, delicately and very uh, extensively in the linear uh, control course. But uh, here, I assume that uh, you are all familiar with that. So, what to do is basically have a feedback, as we have. We measure the Q, and uh, we have a desired trajectory, as we defined before. We get the error. And then we put it into a controller. This controller is linear, so we can use Laplace transform. And we have also some disturbance coming here, uh, which was the gravity term in our robotic uh, manipulator. And uh, the simplest linear controller, first of all, uh, since all each or each uh, motor or each joint has a simple or linear model here we use as you use as you see ECI IEI for each uh, uh, joint of the motor of the robot uh, we can have uh, independent linear controller so we have if we have six degree of freedom we have six motors we use six different controllers each independently on that so we use a design linear controller for each joint, and the joint is uh, indexed by uh, this I notation, as you see in here. So start with very simple and practical uh, controller, a PD controller. Again, this PD controller is uh, theoretical. You know that we cannot implement a exact PD controller. We have some uh, filtered PD controller in industrial control. You see that. But in general, if we have a PD controller, consider a theoretical case. So we have a second order system plus a disturbance and we have a PD controller here, CS. For each uh, link is KP plus KDS. Um, so it is very easy to find the uh, uh, stability of the system, the uh, uh, let's say steady state error, the transient response, uh, Roth Horowitz stability criterion, or using Nyquist criterion, you can have design in the uh, pole placement, or let's say. Uh, uh, root locus uh, approach. You can have different approach to design that. Uh, so the the idea is to find a suitable gain KPI and KDI for each joint, uh, ne letting to know that we have some knowledge, uh, not very accurate knowledge. We have some knowledge about uh, IEI and BEI that we have found uh, by dynamic analysis and. Uh, calibration. Uh, so we close the loop, find the closed loop transfer function. Uh, we have two inputs here, the desired trajectory. We would like to track this. So we would like to have the error becoming zero. And we have another input, which is the disturbance input. And we would like to reject the disturbance. So we would like to make the, that part equal to the, the effect of that, uh, to reject the effect of, uh, of uh, disturbance to the output of the system. So with the both input, uh, we find the, the closed loop transfer function. You know that this is very quite easy. You have CP. Uh, so CP over 1 plus CP would be the, your uh, uh, basically your uh, to, to closed loop transfer function. And 1 plus CP, as you see, C times that plus 1, uh, your uh, closed loop characteristic equation, uh, which I uh, name it with omega i here, is a second order system. Very easily find IES2 plus BEI plus DES. So it's the multiplication of these two, 1 plus P times uh, uh, C, uh, and uh, simplifying that comes this one. And uh, for this input, 
but uh, if you use uh, the direct manipulation, you should have uh, KPI plus KDI in the in the numerator. And for this input, you don't have anything in the numerator and you have only the characteristic equation, the feedback effect. And this omega i, if this omega i is very large as you see, uh, so the effect of gi would be diminished or rejected. And now I'll talk about it a bit more. It is a second order, so it is the simplest possible linear controller that you have. And it is very uh, nice to see that we talk in the linear control most of the part for the second order system. It seems that uh, we were just uh, talking about the robotic manipulator at that time uh, without knowing that the robotic manipulator could sit in here uh, as the uh, plant of the system. Now, uh, this uh, closed loop characteristic equation, as you see, uh, we can't find the tracking error, for example. We can find the trajectory uh, tracking to see how this goes for a PD control, of course, the most simplest, the simplest possible controller that we can have. Not the simplest possible. The simplest possible is only KPI, uh, the simplest practical controller that we have. So if we can find the tracking error just by uh, you know subtracting QD minus QI, we can find the EQI. We have QI one uh, make QD minus this. Uh, this becomes positive, and uh, we have uh, instead of KPI, we have the remaining part in here, IE squared plus PE uh, times QDI, and this times this one. Uh, notice that we have a linear controller with two inputs. Uh, this one will disturb our trajectory planning, and this one we require to follow that. So uh, in linear controller, we usually use step inputs uh, to find the output characteristic and the transient, uh, both the transient and steady state error. Uh, so uh, we use a step input. Uh, just in the parentheses, uh, in robotic, we don't have step input. We don't like to have very sharp motion. You remember uh, the most significant or the best uh, maybe practical input was linear parabolic blend. So we have a second order or a ramp. We might have a ramp or a second order system uh, for a, a input for a QI. But to start with, we start with the first order or the uh, very simple step input. You know that the step input in Laplace uh, uh, formulation is 1 over S. And also we consider that now, for now, that our disturbance, the, the weight or the gravity term is also somehow uh, uh, constant uh, and step. It is not vanishing, it is constant. The constant value is given by GI. You remember that we did that in our uh, calibration process to find what would be the constant value for that. And it is constant with the time, so in the Laplace domain, it becomes a step input here. So we have two step input uh, values here. You can see that S comes in here, and we reduce the S from here because of uh, multiplying 1 over S here. The error dynamics uh, would be this. So the, we can uh, analyze the uh, steady state error uh, using final value theorem. You are quite familiar with that. We can use uh, basically the uh, transient response by uh, noting the zeta and omega n, uh, the characteristic equation that we have. I start with the steady state error. Uh, do we have any stated, uh, steady state error uh, with, this, uh, with this case? It seems that we should have because we have a constant disturbance in the system. And you remember that uh, since we are not type 1, usually we have some steady state error. So we can uh, uh, examine that. The steady state error, as you remember, is limit of time goes to 0 time to infinity of uh, error is equal to limit of s times eis when s goes to zero. This is final value 
theorem in Laplace transform, and if you just multiply S to here, this will go, and this also will go, though what you will have, this part will uh, goes to zero, but this part remains here. So you have GI over KPI uh, would be your f uh, steady state error here. You don't have zero steady state error, as you see. As the time evolves, the steady state error will, uh, 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 will vanish. Uh, if G goes to zero, if we have vanishing uh, uh, gravity term, but if the G is not vanishing, which is the case that we see here, uh, if we have non-vanishing uh, disturbance, uh, then the steady state, uh, state uh, error exists. The amount of the steady state error is this, and this is the accuracy of your robot, basically. Uh, the accuracy that you can get, uh, you say that uh, one micron, no, it is not, not one micron. But this can go very, very small. Uh, to reduce that, you can be very, very, very small by increasing the KP gains. Uh, so you should, if you have high gain, uh, then uh, the steady state error goes uh, to zero. Uh, but you know that you cannot go very high uh, gains. Uh, anybody can uh, contribute why we cannot go very high. The KP is limited somehow. Why this is the case? The overshoot, maybe? No. In the comments, it's because of instability, I think. No. Actually, Sorry. Zahra, what, what are you saying? I didn't hear you. Uh, I said noise also amplifies. Yes, but the most important part never uh, yeah, Java actuator is limit. Yes, Mohammed Bajelani, actuator limitations. Uh, KP, if KP is high, you look at here, the controller, you see here, the tau of the controller is related directly with KP. So if you make it very high, it means that, that your requested tau or the amperage that you request from your motor is very high. And you know that uh, each DC motor has a current limit there. So you cannot go very high. Of course, noise is also correct, as mentioned. Uh, also, uh, the transient is also important, as mentioned. But the most important part is actuator limitation. And as you see here, in the first slide, I put the actuator limitation here. And this is the main difference between theory and practice, not the main difference. The, in practice, you should add to this. I remember uh, it was very, very exciting for me. The first time I implemented my first controller, go back to maybe uh, 30, 35 years ago, uh, but I had a DC motor, a link over there, I put, uh, I designed the controller, I get the, 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 the model for the system, design the controller, and put it there on the on the motor, and it start to oscillate. <laughs> Let's say near stability, as Mahdi um, said. And I was wondering why I designed everything based on the theory. Yes, uh, in theory, if we don't have any actuator limitation, you can increase your gain, and you can get very very uh, limited uh, steady state error. But this is not the case. So we cannot go very high because of the stability. Of course, the stability here, it is uh, uh, not uh, for the second order system, you don't have any stability issue. We will see for the third order system we have. In practice, we have this one. Uh, but the actuator limitation, uh, I saw that I am giving a very, in my first practice, I saw that I, I'm giving a very high uh, torque requirement uh, or amper or current requirement for the motor, and the motor is, you know, uh, clamping the, uh, the current because of... And then my smooth PD controller is becoming like a, a PWM or an on-off controller, and the on 
off controller will start jittering or uh, giving oscillation to the motor. I never, rem uh, you know, forget that experience. And then I just, uh, it was, everything was correct, only we, I didn't consider the actuator limitation. So I reduced the gain with the same uh, order that I have designed before the KP gain and the K, K, KD gain. And now he, we can have the KP design from here. Uh, we'll talk about the KD as well in the next slide. I just reduced both of them uh, with the same trend and then the controller works very, very well, you know, uh, as uh, I have uh, designed that. So notice that uh, this could be zero or very small in theory, but uh, in practice, we have a, a steady state error. And this is because we, do, we don't have uh, non-vanishing uh, disturbance. We have a step in uh, disturbance. A step in, if we have a pulse disturbance, the effect of that could be uh, removed. But if you have a step in, in a constant point, uh, it will have the signature in the tracking error, as you see in here. Now, go one further step. If there is any question, please stop me. But uh, I will. I will give you just give the last part of this bar, okay? It's the KD gain. Uh, what should be the KD? The KP is somehow uh, limited by the current, but the KD will uh, shape your transient. Uh, this is what Hossein told me, the overshoot or so. Uh, the tracking error uh, can be shaped by KDI. Both of them, of course, KP and KD, both of them, but uh, how we treat that in linear control, very simple. We rewrite the characteristic equation as a second order system. Uh, you remember here, uh, our characteristic equation is for here, i.e. s squared plus something times s plus kpi. We just, uh, you know, factorize i.e. from that and get the zeta omega n uh, notation that it is very, very familiar for you. I hope that you remember this thing from linear control. Uh, so you have an omega n square, of course, for each joint, we have the i uh, everywhere, and a zeta uh, or a c is written here uh, that is really depending. You see that omega n. Uh, the natural frequency is depending on the KPI divided by IE. It means that if you increase the KP, you are increasing the natural frequency of the system, the oscillation that you can get there, and the bandwidth that you can get there. Uh, of course, we are limited uh, to the uh, saturation limit that we have here, but KD doesn't come into the omega n at all. It comes into the zeta. It comes into the performance of that. And you can see in this beautiful, uh, colorful figure that I have get from internet, you can have different zetas. You know, if you put uh, KD equal to zero, you don't have any uh, damping ratio, you have a much uh, very high oscillation. You have a step input. Uh, instead of going to a step, you have some sin sinusoid case here. If zeta is equal to zero, of course, this is not uh, suitable. Also, if zeta is very large, it's over damp, you know, the output is quite delayed, and uh, this is also not good for a robot. We don't want the robot to be. Uh, we call it uh, to be tired, uh, not uh, being able to work with and have some delay. We would like to have a sharp and uh, good uh, moving robot. And usually uh, the requirement comes to zeta equal to 0 0.0707, which gives a very small overshoot and uh, almost non-oscillation, oscillatory motion in the system. Of course, you can choose F F each one of them uh, by selecting the accurate KDIs. And this can be done two ways. The first way is using the control and this uh, parameter to design the uh, steady state error and the
transient response, find these two gains, uh, you put it on the system from the theory and then we tune them. We usually uh, keep the ratio between KP and KD uh, to have uh, this oscillation uh, to be done, but we will uh, reduce the gains or increase the gain depending on our uh, current limit or our torque limitation, as I mentioned in the last uh, uh, slide. So this uh, is a process of design and tuning usually. You design by from the uh, mathematical or the identified or calibrated model of the system, and then you go forward and to get the uh, the actual design on that. There is also another way, don't uh, bother about the modeling anything and just go through the, uh, just tuning it in things. This is also possible, but uh, it doesn't give you the analytical uh, aspect, how to increase the gain, how to decrease the gain, what is affecting that. And usually I prefer to have some initial design and then the tuning process as uh, it is going on in here. Anyways, this is almost everything that we require for a second order. Of course, I didn't give all the details here because uh, you have already know that. And you know that if you want to find the zeta equal to 0.7, uh, your uh, poles of the system should be uh, on 45 degrees. You can use root locus. You can use also uh, Nyquist criteria to find the suitable variable for gain that uh, basically are defined in here. And uh, now we have two uh, equation here. This one gives you the steady state error. This one gives you the transient uh, error and you can uh, give some desired value to the steady state value or the limited value for the steady state error and good and designed shape in the transient case. You have two parameters to design and you will design KP and KD for each motor and for each joint. Since the joints are different, the motors are different, you should do it. If you have a three degree of freedom, you should de design the process three times for each joint and uh, implement it finally, make all of them all together. So I uh, recommend you to review the process of second order system in your linear control course and also in modern control, we are talking about that. Any question up to here? Very well. Mohammed, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, is it uh, possible to drive a dynamic equation in, on an equilibrium point in slide 21 uh, to eliminate a gravity force? And then uh, we need we don't need to uh, high gain uh, as KP. What does it mean? Just drive the uh, equilibrium point. What does it mean? Can you explain a bit more? For what example, do you mean? Uh, for, uh, for a quadrotor or mobile robot, uh, we can uh, drive a equation uh, about equilibrium point and uh, eliminate uh, weight by wait by wait. Wait, wait, I will talk about that. Yeah, I understand now. And uh, you would like to uh, compensate for G for this term. Just wait. Uh, a few slides, we will talk about that. Very good, very good question. Yes, uh, we should get rid of that. You know, this is my uh, next uh, slide. There is two ways. You know, the problem is that we have steady state error. And this means that the precision of my robot is not very good. We cannot have one micron uh, accuracy in, a, that, in such a robot. And you know that all the robotic manipulators are well known for their accuracy. Of course, uh, the better uh, interpretation is for the repeatability, not the exact accuracy, but uh, just this is technical. You know, the robot should move uh, fast. So move fast meaning that omega n should be high. Should have no jitter, no oscillation. KD should be designed well. It should have a zeta close to 0 
and also the steady state error is very very important which is it is not good that because of the weight of the robot uh, we have some problem with that so there is some way to compensate for the weight for this g the main uh, maybe the mechanical or the uh, the first idea is just to uh, compensate the weight uh, by mechanical uh, weight compensation and this means that we have some uh, you know masses added to the system uh, that uh, you know uh, system is you know at the balance or adding some uh, springs uh, to the system or some uh, pneumatic or electron pneumatic or hydro pneumatic system to compensate for the weight of the robot you know that this gravity term is coming from the weight and if you have a link you can just extend the link and have another mass here to balance the robot there of course uh, there are some issues there you know i don't want to go all through that this is another research uh, but uh, i prefer not to give it to you right now because you have some uh, many things to do now uh, but uh, compensation could be mechanical uh, could be electromechanical, could be uh, hydraulic or uh, pneumatic, could be uh, to get rid of the gravity term by the structure. But if this is not the case, we can also compensate it by the control. Really? Yes. And you remember that when we talked about linear control, we have PD control and PID controller. And PID the main difference between PID and PD control is that the type of the system is increasing and you know that if they increase the type of the system the steady state error to the step response would be zero for type 1 system in the linear to control theory. This is the easiest way or the don't say the easiest way one possible uh, approach uh, to design the KP as a PID controller. And believe me, all the uh, robotic, industrial robotic system uh, have a PID controller in them. They have something more than that, as Muhammad said, uh, we'll talk about that, but they have a PID controller. Uh, and the, uh, the PID controller is, uh, we have a, uh, basically a second order system here instead of a first order now put it here put it back here put get the uh, transfer phase function uh, by mason rule or just by direct uh, 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 derivation you are familiar with that remember that uh, issues and you come with uh, uh, another part i put delta here uh, the first one I put omega here, delta, because the characteristic equation is changing. And since we have a second order controller, the characteristic equation becomes third order here. And we were not very uh, familiar with third order uh, characteristic equation in control system, in uh, linear control system, the introductory course. but. Uh, it is not very difficult and you can find this by using MATLAB all the parameters now we have the I uh, here we have a KI uh, for each joint index I is coming for each joint adding to the system and this will result in zero steady state uh, to the uh, input step you know that and we can also uh, find that by uh, just finding the uh, stability criteria and step input uh, uh, case for the first for the previous case i didn't go through the horowitz because we have a second order system the only uh, the condition to have a, a second order system to be positive uh, to be stable is that the gains should be positive so if you have positive gains uh, here uh, the stability is uh, determined for the second order system but for the third order system uh, we might have instability since we have uh, three poles now uh, and uh, you can use Roth Horowitz criterion very simple third order one and you can find that all the gains should be positive of course again and uh, ki should be smaller than a, 
uh, bounded limit or bounding limit, which is comes from KPI and KDI. Again, I uh, like this very much because we see that the robotic manipulator is a very, very suitable example for a linear control practice. And you see that, okay, we shouldn't have very high gains at uh, uh, integral uh, or uh, of course, uh, if you increase the KPI, if you could increase the KPIs, uh, the KP, you know, that is limited by your current. So you cannot increase KP widely. Uh, this means that when you are limited with KP, KEI is also limited to this bound. And uh, of course, this is not very limiting, but it gives you the idea that uh, use or choose small uh, integral uh, gain for the system. Again, for the step input, uh, you find the KDI, if you put the 1 over S and this 1 over S again here, put both of them in here, 1 over S, and then uh, find the error, the uh, steady uh, the error in the Laplace transform, uh, it would be something like that, and you have a second order here, that last time you have a first order system, here you have a second order system, and this will uh, basically, when uh, you put, uh, you find the limit of S, e, S, this becomes zero. This is the main benefit uh, of uh, using an integral term. So we have zero steady state error, now we are reaching to a robot that is high precise, but uh, what is the no pain, no gain? Remember, what is the pain we are uh, getting by this gain, by gaining this uh, case? The pain uh, would be the slower time. You know, I'm putting everything now in together. Uh, this is very, very interesting that if we have a saturation block here, that we have in a motor, we know that the uh, current of the motor is limited. If we have a saturation block here, then the controller and saturation block and the system, now the gains should be limited. And you see, uh, and this saturation block is come from the maximum current that we can get from each motor. This is uh, clearly uh, found from the specific uh, characteristic of the DC motor that we talked about uh, before. And as you see, if we have no saturation, we could have such a uh, very nice and smooth and fast response. But really, the saturation, if there is some saturation, if we are hitting the saturation gain, uh, we get a uh, much slower case. And this is the case of having a PID uh, PID, if you have a PID compared to PD, you have such slower case. And you have saturation, again, you have such uh, slower in case. And uh, uh, of course, uh, this could be still good enough, you know, uh, for a case, for a particular case. Uh, it might be not good enough depending on the case that you have. So uh, this re remains to use the appropriate uh, DC motor to have uh, at least the uh, bandwidth that we require. Here you see that it takes about two seconds, for example, for this particular case to reach to your system. So if you, your robot is a pick and place, it is two seconds is too much. But if your robot is in the space, you are moving something in space, two seconds is very good, <laughs> you know, much better. You need uh, one minute or you have some delays, that, depending on the application that you are doing. If you are doing very fast robot, uh, you should uh, be very careful about the actuator saturation. And as I mentioned, you re this limit your KP gains. Uh, and uh, you might have uh, need uh, some uh, higher uh, current uh, motor uh, available to you to do that. Uh, but usually this is the case, and I uh, just uh, conclude this part. Uh, the, in the integral part also could uh, provide some 
problems we call wind up. Uh, again, these are well discussed in the linear control and also uh, uh, industrial control courses that you have or you will have. Uh, some of you might not have taken that, but many of you have taken that. You have some wind up problem, you have anti wind up problem with the integral term. So the final conclusion is that. Uh, well tune the PD gain as before and get a small, add a small integral uh, gain to the system uh, to reduce the uh, steady state error uh, while not uh, slowing down the uh, controller. You know, in, in a robotic manipulator, speed is much more important than, uh, you know, the steady state error. You know, when you have a for example, a plant, a chemical plant, or a, a, a electrochemical plant, or something uh, that is used in the industries, uh, the speed is not important. Uh, steady state is very important. You have, would like to have uh, zero steady state error. Here in robotic manipulation, we need to have good accuracy, but more than accuracy, it is very important to have speed. We cannot, you know, get the pain of getting much slow system uh, to reduce the steady state. And this is always a compromise. And this is the way a designer will work and uh, you can see. And you see that uh, usually we have a combination here. If you have a very fast uh, robotic manipulator, the Kawasaki uh, Japanese one might be the fastest one. You see that they will think about getting the G, the gravity term, small to make it by design, make it small to not put all the burden on the control, on the integral part. So they used uh, uh, compensation, weight compensation, mechanical weight compensation to the system uh, to reduce the effort that you require the control. But you remember you have uh, the powerful uh, theory, control theory to be used in here. Yeah. Uh, let me start, uh, stop here and then uh, maybe continue uh, the feed forward on the answer to Muhammad Bajalani is in the next one, uh, in the next slide. You can see how we can find, uh, we can get rid of the uh, GI in another mean, not using only uh, PID. We are using PID, but with small integral gain. Uh, thank you very much for being with me. Please, uh, if there is any question, uh, I will be more than happy to answer. I may ask a question. Go ahead. Uh, in the preceding session, you mentioned to read some articles in uh, nonlinear control, I think from Khalil Bush, right? Yes. Uh, would you repeat the titles again? Because uh, I think I lost them somehow. <laughs> Uh, you know, the the issue on uh, Khalil, we still don't need them up to here because we are still linear, uh, but uh, we need the Lyapunov of analysis. Uh, this is a very good question. Let me ask everybody here. Uh, how many people are familiar, are not familiar with Lyapunov of analysis, Lyapunov of theorem, LaSalle theorem? How many people are not familiar? Please raise your hand, because this is also important. Don't uh, worry, don't be shy. You know, if you are not familiar, everybody is familiar with Lassa. Um, so, no, <laughs> So good that uh, Mohammed Mahdi is uh, there enough to tell me. Ali also, too, very good. But the rest of the people, as I see, yeah, Parisa is also not aware. Uh, you know, we need uh, some uh, nonlinear theory. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, you know, we don't need uh, much uh, high theory. Of course, we, we are getting to get 
I, I'm uh, thinking of uh, having a session de designed for nonlinear review or not. It seems that it is not necessary to put a session. I will uh, 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 give you, you know, if you go to my uh, robotic book, the para robot book, there is an appendix on nonlinear control. This is the most uh, concise, uh, maybe, approach that we will use uh, in a control system. There we have three parts, defining the equilibrium point, defining the stability of a nonlinear system, giving the Lyapunov uh, uh, theorem and LaSalle theorem, which we require for the next session. And there is also a ultimate boundedness of the system. So if you would like to go to the Khalil book and read that, you should uh, go to the chapter four of that book, read it through, or go to Slotin uh, book in nonlinear control. This is uh, much easier to follow. Uh, you can read the Lyapunov and LaSalle theorem. These are the two uh, uh, basic theorems that we require. Uh, a very short review of that is in my uh, robotic book. Is it clear, Mohammed? Mahdi? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Hussein, yes, go ahead. Doctor, I have a question somehow far from our like control question. Like usual. Like right? usual. <laughs> 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 uh, when programming or when uh, designing the control and programming the control mainly for these robots, mm. uh, due, due to the fast PLCs, microcontrollers, uh, sensors, drivers, to what to what extent we can design or implement our uh, program our uh, our robot uh, in, uh, uh, depending on con uh, on uh, continuous or in, uh, conventional. Uh, uh, control design and uh, there is a need uh, in this case for digital control designs uh, for simplicity when I uh, again when I talk about simplicity not for me as a, an engineer or a designer I t uh, it's simplicity uh, budget of the microcontroller and the program yes I, I, I understood uh, uh, Hussein question is uh, since we are implementing the controller by microcontrollers, by uh, computer, by uh, some sort of PLCs or uh, so forth and so on, uh, is it necessary to go through the uh, digital control or discrete time uh, control algorithm? Of course, everybody in this course are familiar with the uh, digital control as well, uh, but uh, my answer to this question is depending on your microcontroller. And two days, in, uh, now that we are using the different ARMs or uh, STM or different microcontrollers that uh, has been used, or even PLCs, uh, the, the problem that uh, the, 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 since we have a uh, high power of computation, uh, we can have mm, high uh, uh, sampling time, you know, is, or has sampling frequency. Uh, in my experience, if you have a sampling frequency of one kilohertz, you know, 1,000 time uh, in a second, uh, then you don't need to go to design or redesign your controller, your PID or PD controller in the uh, discrete time. You can use uh, still the same old uh, controller in the digital, in the analog one, in the continuous time, and then implement it in digital. Of course, uh, to implement in digital, you, know, you need to know how to convert it to that. And this is the most significant part uh, that has been to, uh, taught in uh, digital controller control course. Uh, but if you have a delayed system, if you have some flexibility, if you have uh, uh, not high frequency uh, sampling rate, if you are sampling, for example, you are using camera uh, within the robot, uh, then the sampling rate is not uh, one kilohertz anymore. Then it would be the, the most significant one would be 100 FPS, you know. Uh, 100 frames per second. So this means that uh, you have uh, 10 times less than one, one kilohertz. Uh, if your sampling rate comes low because of some reason, some 
important reason that you cannot get rid of, then you need to go to digital control and to see what is the delay uh, coming into the picture. Uh, in industrial uh, controllers that we have in uh, industrial robot, either by PLCs or by using simple uh, microcontroller, today we don't uh, have any problem. Very well, it's fine, Hossein. Then uh, we can conclude the, this session and uh, wish you all luck. Uh, the exam is very, very close to what you have done in your assignment. So make sure that you have all your programs and all your assignment and don't remember that you uh, owe me the thing that you will do your exam by yourself and I will uh, watch clearly and watch. Uh, I, I, I trust on your award and I hope that you all would be uh, very, very uh, successful in your exam. Do doctor? Yes. Uh, can, can we depend the, uh, more on our codes and commenting our codes? Uh, still, uh, it may be more clear and uh, time effective. Yes, yes. And that's touching it with code. Yeah, the, the, uh, for the exam, you mean, or for generally? No, no, for the exam. For yeah, the exam? We, we write, we, we write our, yeah. our answers, but brief, but we can uh, explain in the code or comment in the code for calculations yeah, well, and... You know, uh, the exam that we, uh, this is a very good question, you know, uh, you will give two uh, things to us. One is your handwriting, your uh, final conclusion, and also the printout of your MATLAB solution and so forth and so on. So uh, you go with that. Uh, and uh, remember, we have three, uh, three questions in the uh, exam, so you uh, should clearly do all the three ex uh, questions. Uh, and also, uh, make it a PDF of this file, uh, even if you type it or you write it by hand, it doesn't matter. The only thing is you have a well, very clear PDF file that we can uh, read it through in one file and then uh, score to you. And also you should uh, give all the program that you are using in a zip file. Uh, just question one, question two, question three, if you have some uh, example, two, one, two, three. Uh, all the codes, uh, and we will uh, check that, uh, and we will run that to see that your codes are working uh, actually in our computer. So it is very good to have uh, also commented, but uh, I guess we are uh, professional enough to understand what you are doing. Uh, so the only thing is that uh, the, the solution that you get from your uh, programs are of what you have written in your uh, pages. That is uh, the uh, criteria that we will check. Uh, so uh, I make sure that uh, this is an open book, open computer exam. You don't need to do everything by hand. Open internet even. If you can find the solution in, in, in the internet, there is no problem with me. You know, you can find a paper and the solution is in the paper. I don't think it, it is, uh, it, you can find something like that, but there is no problem with me. The only problem with me is that uh, do it yourself. That's the only request I have. But, uh, uh, yeah, the exam is the same level as your uh, assignment and project. Uh, I don't say the same ex uh, uh, the same questions, <laughs> of course, not the same questions, but the level of uh, confidence is the same. So don't worry about uh, the exam, just pass it through. I just uh, uh, recommend you to go uh, for climbing uh, on the uh, mountains or some um, uh, you know, hiking uh, in a good place on the Friday to get uh, freedom in your mind to uh, do it uh, very well. Uh, don't worry about it. Of course, I know that exam have some stresses, 
but forget about the stresses and uh, take your time to do it very well. Yeah, we are out of time now. Thank you very much for everybody and uh, take care of yourself. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.